Good morning, church. Happy Palm Sunday. So let us rejoice and be glad in because Jesus Christ has come to Jerusalem to save our lives and give eternal life. That's the good enough the reason, right? Be glad and joy today. So let us greet each other, waving your branches each other. <laughs> Hi, happy Sunday. And a happy Palm Sunday. <laughs> Again, warmly, I would like to welcome all of you to the worship at Union Center Methodist Church today. So now, would you please join in pray for the worship to the God. Our Lord Jesus, let your spirit enter into our heart today. Just as you rode into Jerusalem so many, many years ago, we shout, Hosanna, Hosanna, Lord, save. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Please list our praises and love this morning. We pray this in your name. Amen. Would you all please stand and join me for the call to worship? As the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down to the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
beautiful, beautiful singing this morning. While we're all standing, let's say our affirmation of faith with each other, for this is what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, for the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Would you please be seated? Our New Testament reading this morning is from the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human kind, likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place, and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Now let's enjoy our music from Eric, Get All Excited. <laughs> okay, let's have some joys and blessings now. Somebody's had a, a wonderful joy that they'd like to share. I just know it. Vicki. Here I am again. Christopher <laughs> came home on Monday, and he's doing excellent. He's holding his oxygen at 93 to 95 without the oxygen tank. So they finally have found the medication that would take care of that pneumonia after three times being <laughs> in the hospital. He's very excited, very happy. My other joy is my son had his biopsy done on the nodule that's on his thyroid, 
and that came back non-cancerous. So Amen. We are Yay. so thrilled and so happy. So he's, yeah, he's very, very happy. Oh, I'm sure. And um, still need a prayer for my daughter. She goes for her ablation a week from Tuesday in Rochester. So just prayers for her, and if he can come through it all, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the prayers. Amen. Andrew, this is Glover Hess. Good morning. Well, I had a birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a good one. I am blessed to have so many friends. I got so many cards and calls, and, and pizza was brought to me. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I thank the Lord for taking care of me and giving me these 89 years to live here for him. Amen. So now I'm working on the next one. All right. <laughs> Amen. Any other joys? Or? Oh, come on. <laughs> All right, Nancy. Well, I've had a joy for um, a week and a half to two <laughs> weeks of taking care of my little one-year-old great-grandson, which is a trial because he's very busy and <laughs> I'm not quite as agile as I used to be, <laughs> but it was a, a, I'm glad I'm at that point where I can do things for my family and not have to worry about I have to get to work or I have to be here, <laughs> I have to be there. And they say it takes a village to take care of a child, and we have... Let me tell you, a village of grandparents in this place that just love to have a baby around because he was here yesterday for the uh, baskets going out, and he had the best time ever with everybody that was here, and it was very nice to have all these grandparents that like to play with babies in this church. Word of thanksgiving and praise for the surgeon that took care of Judy's eye. Very skillful. Now we're waiting for uh, another appointment for the right eye to be done. So, amen for the surgeon. Amen for God taking care of her. Amen. Thank you. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> But I just want to thank everybody for all their prayers and, and all the healing that has happened to me. And above that, this past week, Deborah's uncle celebrated his 93rd birthday. And on the same day, his great-granddaughter gave birth to a child. <laughs> he is a great-great-grandfather. That is, I mean, ain't God good. <laughs> Just a reminder that today is our last published um, funding Sunday. Um, you can, uh, of course, donate money anytime afterwards. We just made three special Sundays to bring more attention to our disaffiliation fund. Um, Friday at 6 o'clock, we are having a combined service for Good Friday here with our sister church, Wesley UMC. And also, if you'd like to have your cross displayed at the church between next um, Good Friday and Easter Sunday, it's not too late. You can bring them into the office this week. Um, if you can't make it into the office, bring it next Sunday, and we'll make sure that it, it's displayed proudly. We have a lot of um, prayer requests on our back page. I do ask that you um, please look at those throughout the week. Pray for these people. The update is um, Mike and Robbie's granddaughter that was in Florida was in a terrible, terrible car accident. She's out of ICU. She's out of the hospital. And she's in a rehab facility where she's doing well. So that's a praise. So amen. 
for that. Anything else that we'd like to bring forward? Okay. So let's bow our heads for a moment of silent prayer, and then um, I'll pray us for. Father God, what a special day today is, Palm Sunday, when we can retell the story of, of when your son rode the donkey and the palm branches were being raised and, and waved in his honor, Father. Father, we're thankful that we are part of that family, that you've taken us into your family that we are in your heart, that your strong arms envelope us to protect us, to guide us, Father, and that you love us. Father, we've heard um, praises. We've heard some uh, concerns this morning. We're so happy that Christopher is home with his family, Father. Um, what a relief for the family. What a relief for Christopher, Father. We're happy, Father, and, and that you blessed Bob, um, Iana, that his biopsy came back non-cancerous, Father, and we thank you for that. Father, we're praying for Teresa this morning as she's still suffering from her AFib. And we know, Father, that in another week or so, she'll be traveling to have this taken care of. And I ask that... You give them traveling mercies as they make their way to Buffalo Father and that um, you be with the doctors and the nurses and all the family members that are praying and waiting for the news. Father, we're praying. Um, thank you for the recovery of Judy's eye surgery, Father. And Father, we're keeping her in prayer and we're asking you to um, just envelope her with your love for that when the next time uh, her next eye surgery is, is coming up, Father, that you will guide those same doctors and the same nurses and that her outcome will be um, just as great as this one was. Father, we're thankful for Pastor Jay. We're thankful for Mia and the, the rest of the family, Father. We thank you for sending us a um, loving pastor and family, a Bible teaching pastor, Father. We're grateful, Father, for the uh, church that you've, you've uh, given us, Father, and, and that we can come here and we can pray and sing and raise our hands. Father, I'm thankful for my church family. I'm thankful for my husband. The, the healing that has taken place this week, Father, is, is out of this world, and I thank you so much, Father. So, Father, as, as we continue on with our service, I ask that you bless each and every one of us today, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we stand together as we sing Meekness and Majesty?
You may all be seated. Today's message we're going to share today is taken from John chapter 12, verse 12 through 19. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival and heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it as it is written. Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's court. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that this thing had been done to him. And now the crowd that was is with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the death, continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had performed his sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees, the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. Amen. Would you pray with me? To their Lord, fill me with the grace and your mercy, anointing the power so that I can preach your word humbly. I am unworthy, Lord, but make me worthy by cleaning me and filling me with your Holy Spirit. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be worthy in front of you. My Lord, my rock, may you receive all glory and honor. Amen. Palm Sunday, once more, I'd like to say thank you, welcome all of you, especially who are here in person mm -hmm. and also watching YouTube and Facebook. It's welcome. It's the way you have the you know, back then up there. So for the people who's watching and enjoying together this morning through online platforms like YouTube and Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> we probably don't need a longer explanation of what the following phrases mean. Red carpet reception. Red carpet treatment, red carpet welcome, roll out the red carpet. I think you probably know is what this means well, right? Yes, that's right. It's when you think of a fancy event, the first thing that comes to mind may be the red carpet. The red carpet has become a symbol of respect and hospitality for welcoming and entering precious guests. One place is where you can easily see such scenes are at film festivals. Today's passage actually reminds me of the academic award ceremony. This is what it said. They went off and found everything just as Jesus has said. It's why they were untying the donkey his owners asked, why are you doing that? They answered, the Lord needs it. Then they led, then they lead the donkey to Jesus. They put some of their clothes on its back and helped Jesus get on. And as he, and then as he rode along, the people spread clothes on the road in front of him. Luke chapter 19. And blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. And if there's one thing that can be left out from the red carpet, 
It's the people and go to the fourth zone. After walking the red carpet, stars invite to the fueling festival pose for fans in the fourth zone. This moment sometimes receives as much public interest and attention as news of the film festival award itself, right? But now, imagine Jesus riding on a young donkey and entering into the fourth zone. Let's imagine, think about it. It's quite funny, isn't it? His unassuming and interesting appearance would likely become a hot topic for a whole month or more. However, today, I wanted to turn the angle of the, this camera from the red carpet of Jesus' splendid welcome towards the people gathered now to see Jesus Christ and his disciples. This is because wherever Jesus and his disciples go, it is always described. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. The world, the great crowd, in fact, this situation is not unique to today. And people gathered from all over the places to see the Lord. There's a purpose for coming to see Jesus Christ were different. Some came to receive healing, some to solve their problems, some for political, political reasons, some out of jealousy and envy to make Jesus Christ for trouble for Jesus Christ. And even some just gathered without any particular reasons. In fact, the last reason who the people in a calm and to see Jesus Christ and his disciples without any particular reasons are probably the most common case. I think that this is the same to today. It's when you go to a rally or crowded place, there are always people who come without any particular reason or I have no idea. I once asked my grandmother, on her ninth birthday, Donna, <laughs> is when were you happiest that you would like to go back to? My grandmother always answers without any hesitation. She said it was when they all shout the victory and hooray after, together after the end of the Korean War. She said, the excitement and joy of that day was so great that she couldn't never forget it. I fully understand what she's saying. Because over the few years in Korean world, everything was destroyed. And the people are really afraid of that. But that sign is we can go back to the, our normal life. I fully understand. But interestingly, my grandmother had went to go join a crowd to see what the commotion was, and only later found out about it, as did most of the other people there. Similarly, people gathered to see Jesus for various personal reasons, and among them, many probably joined without knowing who Jesus was. That's why back then, everyone who was there had a different understand, understanding of who Jesus was. Some knew a lot about him, while others didn't know much at all. So the level of knowledge about Jesus Christ among the people gathered there at the time was all different level at all. If you look at the way, you can classify the people gathered here today as follows. First of all, crowds or onlookers. They gathered to see Jesus after hearing rumors about him. And those who and those who know who he is, those who know to who he was to some extent, or those who came just to see what's going on there. 
The next group, congregation. They have received teachings or grace from Jesus and wanted to get close to him and live more about him. People are in the level of that, a crowd or a congregation. What about last group? The dedicated followers and disciples. They have experienced Jesus Christ directly and wanted to dedicate themselves to sharing their experiences with others. That's the level of follower and disciples. Like I said, all different types of groups would have been combined at the same time in the same group. We can probably also recognize them from their confession about Jesus Christ. Take a look at the disciples of Jesus and the people of God. It's when they first saw Jesus, they thought that they thought of him as just a carpenter's son from Lazarus. However, they later confessed him as a wise teacher and rabbi who gives wisdom and guidance in their life. They also confessed him as the son of the living God and the Savior who gave himself up on the cross and resurrected. So depending on is what someone confessed to Jesus Christ, you can somewhat gauge the depth of their faith. Because no one can say, Jesus is the Lord without any help of the Holy Spirit. He asked his disciples, the blessed are you, the Simon, the Simon son of Jonah, for, the, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. Who do you confess Jesus to be? What's our mission? The congregation has a mission to proclaim and share the Lord's grace and who he is to those who remain in the crowd. And the level of the devoured and disciples have a mission to become raw mothers so that the congregation can experience the Lord and dedicate their lives and share it with others. We can see from the Bible that if we only remain, if we only remain in the same level of congregation and the crowd, our faith and life will eventually lose faith. Look at Jesus' disciples. After Jesus was arrested, they all scattered. They crowd who gathered for their needs went back to their lives once their needs were met without any concern for Jesus Christ. Only those who share in the Lord's suffering and witness the glory of the resurrection were able to fully achieve salvation and experience the joy in salvation through the church. So Apostle Paul is warning the believers in the following. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Just as not everything goes to school sticking to their original major, not everyone goes to church for the God's grace, salvation, Love and peace. Am I right? When you back to your school life, is went to the church only for the reason, starving at school? No. Therefore, Apostle Paul hopes that people are not simply attending the church, but also participating. Are you simply attending church today? Or are you participating in worship in partnership? The Lord hopes that we will choose the latter. Furthermore, following Palm Sunday, 
God calls us to share in the life of the church and God's brothers and sisters experiencing his suffering, resurrection glory. This Sunday is about celebrating that Jesus chose to take that journey to Jerusalem and to continue that journey all the way to the place of skull where he was crucified and died on the cross for our sake. Jesus went to the cross to take our sins away. Yes, this was one time even, but still today we, and he bears this that spoke to us of his unfailing mercy and grace. Palm Sunday, it's just beginning of the most important story, love story you will have heard or read. And now it's the time for us to give our life to God through Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, I would like to invite you to the table, Holy Communion. Hosanna, Hosanna. In the highest, blessed is the one who comes in the Lord's name. Glory to God, Hosanna. Beloved children of God, you are all invited to the table, whether you are here as a member or not, because Jesus Christ, our Lord, Savior, and Redeemer, and gave himself up for everyone, especially with the beginning of the passion and glory of Christ, this table would be even more meaningful in remembrance of his sacrifice and love. Would you join me in prayer together? Steadfast love, you hand us the palm branches so we can wave them in hope You steered us in the days when pain is stuck to the bottom of our lives. When fear our constant compassion, we... Let us open our heart and mind as we sing together. Sanctuary. Good news, Jesus Christ died for us while we are yet sinners. That proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Let us confess together the great thanksgiving. May the God of Hosanna be with you. Lift your broken hearts to our God. 
remember to sing laments during this holy time. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image. It's when you turn away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made the covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on the earth and all the company in heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 God and power and mighty, earth, in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And holy are you, and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. Deliver us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And also in remembrance of this, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice. In union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of Faith. Christ is high. Christ is risen. Christ. On the night, he gave himself up for us. He took breath, gave thanks to you, and broke this breath. And say, and this is my body, the which is given for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you, all of you. This is my new covenant poured out for you, for many, for you and for many, for the forgiveness of your sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. When the pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on this gift of bread and wine, Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast all his heavenly banquet. Amen. And through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, Almighty God, our Father, now and forever. Amen. Beloved children of God, let us compass. So what, let us compass and praise with Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be the thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. This is the body of Jesus Christ broken for you. This is the blood of Jesus Christ shed for you and me.
this morning we will really have communion by, you know, through brethren as wine. You will be offered, a, we will be offered a piece of bread and wine. And also we have a gluten-free option. If you need to please tell me, we will serve you. And also if we want to have this communion on your seat, also please tell me, we will serve it for you. So if you're ready, you have a heart and mind, please come forward and to take this bread and wine. Please, Debbie, and anyone who comes to me. Thank you. Who would you like to have this one? Bread? Yeah. The comfort to have this bread and wine. You take bread first and wine, please.
you're all ready to have this bread and wine together, so you can go. This is what we call communion. So I would like to invite all of you to the pray together after communion. Lord Jesus, you humbly yourself in taking the cross of the service. Would you please stand if you are able? And let's sing together our closing hymn, Tell Me the Stories of Jesus Christ. Here's the benediction. Today is the day when Jesus came to us to suffer and be resurrected in Jerusalem. Lord, we pray that our faith may guide us to confess our sins and experience your sacrifice and suffering and to live by sharing it with our church and neighbors. Lord, give us the faith and wisdom of life to become role models to teach and watch over those who need you. We go from this place ready to follow Jesus to the garden, the cross, and the tomb. Come save us, Hosanna. We go from this place knowing that even in death, God's love endures. Come save us, Hosanna. We pray in the Lord's name. Amen. Go in peace.